You're here with Albert Lee. And what did you do at the San Diego Regional this past uh, Saturday and a couple of days ago from now? So I played pure cash Tierra and I got second place. I went I went eight and one in Swiss and I basically went undefeated until the last round and then I lost in the finals. Dang. It's okay, man. Hey, at least congrats for getting second. Next time you will get that dub. And I've been telling you um that you finally will break that curse. You guys don't know. I've been knowing this guy for a while. Um, he's been bubbling out several events, and you finally broke the curse. Congrats for getting second place, and looking forward to uh, more accomplishment from you, Albert. And uh, also, before the deck profile, what made you want to play Cashier? So I've been I've been playing Cashier since it came out in Photon Hypernova with the second wave of support. Uh-huh. And it's just a deck that I've gotten comfortable with, and, and it's just something I've been playing for a while. And... I have I have all the cards for the other decks like Snake Eye and Voiceless, but mm-hmm. I just decided to play Cash Tira in the end because Shifter is a pretty good card. It's good, it's good into the Snake Eyes matchup and it hinders Voiceless a little bit, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it kind of it kind of hinders the Tenpai Dragon combo coming back from the graveyard mm-hmm. a little bit as well. So it's mm-hmm. really good against the top three decks in my opinion to play. Also. Um, it's just the familiar familiarity. Mm-hmm. Like I, I can like play Snake Eye and Voices at like an average level, but mm-hmm. if I play against a really good player in a mirror match, I know I will most likely not see mm-hmm. the typical combo lines, and I'll probably misplay, and that might cost me the game Correct. against Correct. a really good player. Which you know, if you go to regionals or the YCSs, once you're like near the end and you're at the top tables, all you're playing against are the good people. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, like there's like gonna be a bunch of sweat, but um, yeah, you you do have good explanation on that part and uh, ready for ready when you are for the deck profile going over your um list. My deck list, um, I I chose to play blind second. Typical cash tier builds, they play the cybers line with like fifteen hand traps. I actually tried the deck build one time and played it at uh, LA regional. I did not like it. it. There were so many hands where all I drew were hand traps and no names, mm-hmm. or I would draw like a bunch of hand traps and like one, one engine card. And then they hit it with an interruption and I have to pass turn. Mm-hmm. It was, it felt so bad. I, yeah. I was just like, Nope. Yeah. <laughs> no more. I needed, I, I need to, Go back to how I was winning, and yep. I've been winning with blind second. I know there's a lot of decks right now that run rampant, do co- a lot of combos, set up negates. Well, that's something I have to deal with. That's mm-hmm. why we play a mix of board breakers and hand traps, which I will go over right now. Oh, yeah. So the hand traps that I play are you know the, the typical hand traps. Play play three ash over here. And then play the reshifter. Obviously, it's one of the best cards in the deck. And I personally do not like playing anything that conflicts with shifter mm-hmm. unless I really, really have to. So, which I'll get to later with my side deck cards. And then I have the three in- infinite impermanence and then the one ghost spell, one ghost mourner. Now, I have this thing where I'm playing the one ofs because I just see it. Mm-hmm. I have I have also the one of Lava Golem and I saw this thing plenty of times <laughs> at San Diego the one of and oh, people crazy. are setting up like Apollosa and Hope Harbinger nope gone <laughs> no, no response yep. they, they did their whole combo just to get Lava Golem <laughs> and and they use a they use a most of their resources that way and, and they're just sitting on like one card in hand, which is usually a follow-up engine card, mm-hmm. and they have they have like one or none, one to no back row, and then they have like the the temple field spell sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I just golem, and then if, if I draw the combination with golem and dark hole, then you really lose. Mm-hmm. And then the typical the typical engine, uh, three unicorn, three Fenrir. Uh, I opted to play two Rizard and the Ogre. Uh, no prep. I don't feel like the preparation trap card is necessary currently. 
because it's too slow and I don't have a, I don't have space in my side to play it. I'm not, I'm playing blind second, so I don't want to see a trap card that I can't use until next turn. Correct. So in previous iterations of my build, I would have it in the side, but I just didn't feel like it's necessary at the moment because there aren't that many, there aren't that many labyrinth decks running around. So I don't really need the, the hand rip for the preparations mm-hmm. and it just doesn't really come up. I, but I did keep the ogre. I was de- debating on playing ogre or the third rise heart. And I just ended up playing two and one because I just kept, the, I, I was playing three rise heart and I cut the ogre, but I was seeing too many hands where I would draw lava golem and my one of lava golem. And I would have rise heart in hand. And that would be my only engine card. So I was like, well, no, I need something else. Like, it, it's sometimes just a body. It's mm-hmm. also just a body, honestly. Mm-hmm. It's, it's 2,800, and with field spell, it can go up to, like, 31. Mm-hmm. And I don't, have to, I don't have to waste a second Unicorn of Fenrir when I try to OTK with it. Correct. I could just summon Ogre. And looking at the top five cards of my opponent's deck and banishing one off the top, potentially hitting, like, their one of is great. Mm-hmm. The best card against voiceless Scareclaw Cashier. Yep. You <laughs> swing any of your names into the Skull Garden, it's negated and it dies. <laughs> it's beautiful. Good. All right, and then now, and then obviously three birth, three planet, and then two of the Cashier Theoses. Um, I I just cut it down to th- two, from three to two because I'm playing Thrust, so it's. Essentially, I'm playing three of it anyways. Mm. And then the secondary effect, it only comes up when I use it with Rise Heart. And since I'm only playing two, I feel like I only need two. Mm. And and I don't I wanna I want to minimize the hands where I open b- both birth and theosis. Mm. Mm. Because sometimes opening up both of these isn't the greatest. Especially if I don't open up a name. Mm-hmm. But yeah, also, I'm not playing terraforming. Um, I do it because I want to play a round draw. I don't want an extra card. It's like, I know it's a fourth field spell, basically, but mm-hmm. I want to play around draw. Mm-hmm. I, and it's kind of bad going second. If I open up field spell and terraforming going second, when that terraforming could have been one of my other utility cards. Mm-hmm. So that's why, that's why I cut the terraforming. Going going into the board breakers, it's change of heart. Um, I played change of heart because the Kashira engine being splashed into the other decks started becoming popular. So I felt like if I was playing against snake eye decks, snake eye decks, there would be a good number that would play the uh, snake eye cash variant. Uh-huh. So I was like, if I open change of heart, then that's engine right there. Mm-hmm. They have Fenrir or Unicorn board. All right, I'll just change of heart, take the Unicorn. Mm-hmm. Princess isn't a factor anymore. I just, if I take Unicorn, I'll get birth and normal my Fenrir, and then I'll play from there. Oh, and okay. Yeah, so that's that's why I decided to uh, actually main deck the change of heart. It was in my side mm-hmm. before, but I decided to put it into main because of that reasoning. Mm-hmm. And then... Obviously, the two dark dark holes is. I had one in here, but I put it up to two for this tournament because I just wanted to see it, uh-huh. and the combination of dark hole plus lava golem is so good. <laughs> I'll I'll golem I'll golem their board, and then it'll trigger flamberge, get the two monsters back, and then I'll dark hole it, oh. so it'll clear the board and princess isn't even a factor no more. Oh, okay. So Britain, nothing just yeah. happened, basically. <laughs> basically. You know, respecting the back row decks, I, one Duster, one, one Lightning Storm. Mm-hmm. Um, going, going into game twos and threes, I would actually side out the Lightning Storm for, for some other cards in my side deck. Because I, I was just looking at the matchup, and typically you know snake eye players to avoid evenly and to avoid the lightning storm they'll mm-hmm. put a card on your board so that kind of messes you up oh. on the follow-up if you if you're drawing for turn and you draw lightning storm and you can't use the lightning storm then correct. it just becomes a dead card in your hand correct correct and that'll be it for the the main deck ending it off with three prosperity which is you know 
the typical. Mm-hmm. So it's 40, 40 card main, 19 monsters, 18 mm-hmm. spells, and then the three traps. Mm-hmm. That's my main. And then we'll go to the side deck. The first five are hand traps. It's triple droll and double ogre. I played three cosmic cyclones. Mm-hmm. The second copy of Thrust, it's so the, the rare occasion where I go first, I would side in the second Thrust, and if I needed the Dimensional Barrier, that's when I would put it in. Thing is, I didn't play any decks where I needed the Dimensional Barrier, so it just stayed in my side deck the whole time. And so, <laughs> same thing with the second Thrust. These two never left my side, wow. it was just in there. <laughs> I mean, it was there to prepare for Tenpai. for Tempai, but it just it just never went in. Now we're going to the last five cards, my go first cards. I got the there can be only one for Tempai. Mm-hmm. They can only control one dragon. So mm-hmm. all their things, all their core monsters are dragons. So if I flip this on them, they have to go link package, and I can handle their link package. Mm-hmm. It's the and I I won't die from it. And then rivalry of warlords. I decided to play this. I saw I saw some other people play it, and mm-hmm. I understood the reasoning for it. Most of the main monsters in Kashtir are psychic, mm-hmm. so like Fenrir, Uni- Fenrir, Unicorn, the Ogre, the Scareclaw, they're all psychic. Mm-hmm. To fit, but back to the side, just to finish it off, just the solemn judgments. It's just negate. It's it's for evenly match or dark ruler. Yep. No yep. more. Which is the Centurion player that I played against in game two, I had my whole board set up with Shang, Fenrir, and Unicorn mm-hmm. with uh, Birth and mm-hmm. the Field Spell, mm-hmm. and he dark ruler no more than me. And I'm like, okay, solemn judgment. And then <laughs> he proceeded to scoop, and we went to game three after that. Okay. Now to the extra deck. I played Chen Ying. The next couple six, I played. I played doubles. Zeus. Mm-hmm. Zeus is really good into cash, so I played doubles. Mm-hmm. I played double Zeus. I played double Sheng, and then I played double Big Eye. Oh. And then you know Draco Sack is for skill drain or just to get rid of the monster on the board. Mm-hmm. Infinite Track Mountain Smasher. This is how you make format Zeus. I actually baited the Centurion player I was playing with this. I hit his I negated his Crimson Dragon in game two and then I hit him with the Mountain Smasher and I attached the Crimson Dragon to the Mountain Smasher. So I had three materials on top of it. Mm-hmm. And then I put a Zeus on top of it. And I Zeus his board and he was on top deck mode. I like. And then the number 76 harmonizer gradial. Mm-hmm. This is the one where I can quick effect detach one and then target a monster in my opponent's graveyard and attach it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it can't be destroyed by battle or card effects with can't be destroyed by battle with a monster of the same attribute also cannot be destroyed by the active effects of your opponent's monster with the same attribute so mm-hmm. this plus planet is pretty good mm-hmm. because you're usually making it with two different attributes mm-hmm. so that's three three attributes by that's by itself so planet gives this thing 300 attack points so it's a 3k beater with planet Dang, and plus it play around Princess too. Yes. I mean, I don't really make this going into Princess. I, I usually... I actually took uh, Salamon Great Raging Phoenix so that when I destroy one of his fires in battle, mm-hmm. um, the Raging Phoenix wouldn't trigger. Oh, okay. I didn't know because that. I was, because here to use Princess that time, and I got rid of it with Dark Hole, so... Dang, okay. It was just to prevent him from summoning Raging Phoenix and going off and having another big body on board and then good old red eyes i made this thing <laughs> twice and, and then mr mr typhon over here you know, you know to round it off the links sp low night obviously yeah. um i usually make this when i when i the rare chances where i go first i usually end on sp with uh sp shang and then shang will summon a body next turn mm-hmm. if they have a nib and then this is this is a new card that came out in Legacy of Destruction. I actually mean? like I actually saw this in one of the Cashier Facebook groups. Mm-hmm. 
as like a nice card to like test out. And I was like, I, I was reading it and I'm like, okay, this, this is something I might try because originally this was Donner. Mm-hmm. You know, Donner, two, two monsters with different attributes. Mm-hmm. You target a card on, or target a monster on your opponent's field and you pop both of the cards. Mm-hmm. That'll empty out your field. Mm-hmm. That's typically how you got rid of like Nibiru token or Nibiru with any other deck that summons a monster mm-hmm. to your board. But the main issue with that was they could chain Imperm to it and then now you have a dead Donner on your board. Correct. The thing with this card is it it banishes a monster face up on the field or the graveyard with 2,000 or less attack points, of course. And then you target one face of monster in the field and make its attack become equal to the original attack of the monster banished to activate this effect. Mm-hmm. And that's cost. Correct, correct. Yeah. So they they cannot they can't bell this, they can't they can't uh imperm this, they can't valor this unless they do it preemptively. But you know, they they can ash it though, because it says um if you if you banished a monster that was originally a reptile, which this link is, you can draw a card. So you can definitely ash the effect, but that's not the point. <laughs> if they waste ash on this, then you are really winning. I want to give shout outs to my just I just want to give shout outs to my family. They support me playing this game for a while mm-hmm. and they they don't really support me financially in it. But they do give their like support, like emotionally and mentally. Mm-hmm. So that's that's bit, that's really all I need. Just their support is very. I really ap- appreciate it, and it's nice knowing going to these big tournaments that my parents wish me the best and hope that I do well. And you know, this past time, this past regional, I did pretty well, if I say so myself. Mm-hmm. And. I also want to shout out the locals I play at. It's called GX Gamers. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a it's my locals in Los Angeles. Basically, play there every single day besides besides Thursday whenever I have the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have Yu Gi Oh tournaments for advanced every day, Monday Monday through Sunday. Oh, wow. Beside and except for Thursday because he's closed on Thursdays. Mm. But that's basically where I go and there's a good amount of people that come over there. Mm. Decent competition, I would say. Mm. And last but not least, I would like to shout out shout out Mr. Hero, Nathaniel Christmas. We always always talk to each other before big tournaments, trying to like theorize potential cards we can play and what type of matchups we should expect and trying to figure out the side decks and maybe the ratios of what cards to play. Um, this for this past tournament, we didn't really, uh, we didn't really speak too much on the deck profile in itself, but it was mainly his idea to play rivalry in his main deck for heroes since he plays heroes. So I kind of like took that idea and saw that most of my deck mm-hmm. didn't really get hurt by it. And it's pretty good into snake eyes mm-hmm. and a voicelet. So I was thinking, why not play another floodgate going first? Mm-hmm. That is true. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it for the shout outs. Yeah. Well, just say thank you for your time, Albert. And I'm so happy for you. Second place is against the beginning. Looking forward to see you more in the future. And you guys do watch the video all the way to the end. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Your boys are born. And Albert is signing out. Peace.